Hello everyone and welcome to my Duel Today official news channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The strange meaning between Clyde and Stefan, did Stefan actually shoot Harris? Rumors and spoilers from Days of Our Lives suggest that Stefan Mera might be the real shooter of Harris Michaels. Using Ava Vitali's phone, he may have enticed Harris behind the bistro, shot him, and then returned inside. In addition, he and Clyde Weston are about to have an unexplained encounter. Relieved, Ava Vitali, Stefan Mera tense. In the episode airing on Monday, February 26, Ava will be relieved when Harris comes out of his coma, but Stefan will be anxious. Other than the possibility that Harris knew who shot him and would claim it was him, why would he be anxious about Harris waking up? Naturally, Ray Fernandez will have some questions, but it appears that Harris won't be able to respond immediately away, so there will be some waiting. Although the clothes Harris's shooter was wearing were similar to Xander Cook's jogging suit, they could have been taken off fast. Harris fired at almost point-blank range. Turning around, Harris first called for Ava before recognizing his attacker and said, Oh, it's you, to the shooter, Stefan Mera almost continued to tell Ava Vitali dies. Stefan almost said dies to Ava while they hung out to hear some news, and even after they returned to Trip Johnson's flat, where Ava resides. Naturally, Ava would not stop telling Stefan to stop talking about Harris and to keep the word to herself since she wanted him to live. Although he pretended to be being realistic, Stefan didn't seem to share her feelings, given that Harris had lost a lot of blood and had actually coded while Trip was operating on him. Stefan might have been hoping Harris would pass away or, in the unlikely event that he awoke, suffer from amnesia. Before Harris wakes up from his coma, Clyde calls Stefan to Statesville for an unexplained appointment. Stefan is likely asked by Clyde whether Harris has woken up. At that moment, he presumably hasn't, but later in the week, Stefan receives a call. With threats tied to Gabby DiMera, most recently Camila Banis, who has already had her leg shattered and may break her neck next time, Clyde sends Stefan some lethal orders. Even though Clyde seems to go to great lengths before to the shooting to position Xander to take the blame, Stefan will be terrified to disobey his commands. Maggie gave Constantine a compliment over the Greek lasagna he had made. She mentioned that she would like Julie, Doug, Chad, and the children to stay at the mansion, and she gave Constantine credit for making the youngsters feel better. Maggie was moved by the kind comments that Constantine placed inside an envelope containing a Valentine's Day message. Maggie meant a lot to Constantine, and he wanted her to know it. Maggie brought up Victor and his passion for Greek mythology as they talked about Valentine-like Greek customs. Maggie remembered how Victor used to compare her to Psyche, the great beauty, and Eros to himself, a hideous creature. Constantine said that the Greek word Psyche also means soul, and he was happy that he had met Maggie and her amazing soul. Maggie questioned if Constantine had any children, adding that he also had a kind and giving heart. Katharina, whom he referred to as his heart, is the child that Constantine acknowledged having. With a hint of regret, he told Maggie how much Katharina meant to him and how stunning she was on the inside as well. He thought melancholily of how he had consoled himself with recollections of Katharina after she had perished in a terrible accident. Maggie claimed to understand how the anguish of losing a child never goes away. In response to Maggie's question concerning Katharina's mother, Constantine said that although his wife was a fantastic mother whom he loved, Katharina's passing had created a void that the marriage had not been able to fill. Maggie assured Constantine that should he ever need to talk, she would be here to listen. After expressing his gratitude, Constantine had a question for her, May I kiss you? Maggie gave Constantine a quick kiss despite laughing. He bid farewell to everyone and went to bed. While a moved Maggie studied Victor's image, Constantine sobbed in front of a photo of Katharina in his chamber. In Paulina's hospital room, Abe, Chanel, and Johnny gathered to celebrate Paulina's successful surgery. Paulina's thyroid was effectively removed during the treatment, Kayla said, but she made it clear that Paulina might still have side effects or have trouble speaking. Kayla mentioned she'd heard there was another reason to celebrate, while Paulina reluctantly got used to the erase board that was provided for communication. She wished Johnny and Chanel a happy anniversary. Chanel pointed out that she and Kayla had the same Valentine's Day anniversary. 
Paulina noted that although she was ravenous, a departing Kayla reminded her that a menu of soft foods would be created for her and that she would have to wait a day to eat. Paulina responded to Chanel's question about what she needed by writing, Everything I need is right here. Johnny and Chanel shared a slice of a cake that the bakery staff had baked for her. After that, Johnny took out his guitar and started asking for requests. To surprise them, Chanel advised. After Johnny sang on top of the world to Chanel, he was greeted with cheers from everyone. Well done, son-in-law, Paulina wrote. You're quite talented. Chanel accepted and planted a kiss on Johnny's cheek, but Paulina abruptly revealed her distress. When Jada went back to Rafe and Stephanie's table at the Brady pub, she noticed Everett and gasped. Who's Bobby, and who are you? asked an astonished Everett in response to her calling him Bobby. Jada was shocked and inquired if he was serious, revealing that he was Bobby Stein, her ex-husband. Jada retorted passionately that he had destroyed her heart and spirit and had left her without looking back while Everett said he had never seen her before. Rafe corrected Jada when she accused him of lying, revealing to her Everett's name and that he was employed at the Spectator. Everett surmised that Bobby just looked like him and that everyone had a doppelganger after Jada showed him a photo of them together on her phone. That is you, and you know damn well who you are, declared an unmoved Jada. She said that she would drag Everett to the police station and take his fingerprints. Jada became even more upset when Everett implied to Rafe and Stephanie that she was losing it. She kept lashing out at Everett, accusing him of trying to gaslight her and insisting that she was the one acting. After Jada confronted Everett, they ended their marriage because of his lies, infidelity, and ghosting of her. If Everett had been married, he insisted he would have remembered. Flashing back to Everett telling her about his accident, Stephanie wondered out loud if his amnesia had prevented him from remembering Jada. Rafe promised to look into it after Everett and Stephanie gave Jada and Rafe an explanation of the accident and its aftermath. Again denying being Bobby, Everett insisted he had nothing to conceal. Jada begged Stephanie to believe her and to keep herself safe from Everett, saying she could tell by the expression in Everett's eyes that he knew the truth. Jada was told by Rafe to go and discuss the matter later. Jada told Everett he would get what he deserved before she left. Reluctant to engage, Everett questioned Stephanie about her familiarity with Jada. Jada was protected by Stephanie since she was a lovely person and friend. Reiterating that Jada was mistaken, Everett said he would use every lie detector and present his driver's license as identification. The thought that the accident may have erased a whole relationship from his memory made him laugh. Rafe realized getting the truth was important to Jada but asked her to hold off until the next day. He wanted to go home and salvage the rest of Valentine's Day with her. Jada agreed after Rafe promised her that they would get to the bottom of the mystery. They hugged. In the hospital corridor, a nurse approached Kayla and informed her that Tripp had not reported for work. A concerned Kayla called Tripp and left a message asking him if he had lost track of time because of Valentine's Day and the geocaching event. She reassured herself everything was likely fine and ended the call by telling Tripp to check in with her.